questions, here we are. Yeah, has anything come up since the last meeting? Any afterthoughts? Well, only about being accused very early on of stopping him hunting and shooting. Let's now go back to the other life, before this life, as it were. Mm -hmm. Your first memory after being born. Anything as a child? I mean, it was a very unhappy childhood. I remember seeing my father slap my mother across the face and I was hiding behind a door and she was crying. were being unbearable, following my every move. Is it any possibility that any announcements of your marriage in the near future can you tell me? He sat me down and he said, will you marry me? I thought the whole thing was hysterical, getting married. It was so grown up. I mean, here was Diana, a kindergarten teacher. I mean, the whole thing was ridiculous. I once heard him on the telephone saying, whatever happens, I'll always love you. And I told him I'd listened at the door. We had a filthy row. And I realised I'd taken on an enormous role, but I had no idea what I was going into. But no idea. I remember him coming to Althorpe to stay. He came in with his Labrador. My sister was all over him like a bad rat. I thought, God, he must really hate that. And I kept out of the way. I remember being fat, podgy, non-makeup, unsmart lady, but I made a lot of noise and he liked that. And he just came up to me after dinner. We had a big dance. And he said, will you show me the gallery? For a 16-year-old, for someone like that to show any attention, was just so sort of amazed. Why would anyone like him be interested in me? Anyway, that was it for about two years. I saw him off and on with Sarah. Sarah got quite excited about the whole thing. Then she saw something different happening, which I hadn't twigged on to. When he had his 30th birthday dance, I was asked to. Well, why is Diana coming as well? And I said, well, I don't know, but I'd like to come. Oh, all right. And I had a very nice time, the dance, fascinating. And then, um, I was asked to stay with the Duparties in July by Philip Dupart. Would you like to come? Because we've got Prince Wales staying and you're young blood, you might amuse him. So I said, OK. The first night we sat down on the bale and I said, you know, you look so sad. When you walked up the aisle at St Paul's with Lord Mountbatten's funeral. And I said, my heart bled for I watched you. I thought, this was wrong or lonely. So you should be with somebody to look after, etc. And the next minute he leapt on me practically. And it was very strange because it was almost as if like a, it wasn't a magnet effect. I thought, well this isn't very cool. I thought men were supposed to not be so obvious. But I hadn't got anything to go by because I'd never had a boyfriend. I'd always kept them away. I thought they were all trouble and I couldn't handle it. Emotionally, I was very screwed up, I thought. And he said, oh, you must come to London with me tomorrow. I've got to go and work at Buckingham Palace. I thought, this is too much. I said, no, I can't, I'm sorry. I thought, how would I explain my presence at Buckingham Palace when I'm supposed to be staying with Philip? And then it sort of built up from there. Charles used to ring me up and say, would you like to come for a walk? Would you like to come for a barbecue? So I said, yes, please. I thought this was all wonderful. 